Okay, so in this video we are continuing to work through our integration topic. In the previous video we introduced how to calculate an antiderivative of a um, polynomial or power function, so x to the power of n, um, and we talked about the idea of the fact that we need to introduce this constant of integration, the plus c, when we anti-differentiate, because there may have been a constant in the original function that when we differentiate disappears, and when we, we're reversing that process it disappears because it becomes zero, I should say, um, and when we reverse that process it's impossible to know whether there was a constant term um, or not, and so we always write plus c. Now, if you have extra information in the problem, it might be possible to work out the value of C. So let's have a look at some examples where that might happen. Okay, so example one, we want to find Y in terms of X if dy dx is equal to 2X plus 5. So we've been given the derivative and we want to get back to the original function. Okay, so we know that the original function is the antiderivative of the derivative. So that means it is the antiderivative of 2x plus 5 with respect to x. Okay, so let's antidifferentiate then. So that's 2x to the 1, so it becomes 2x squared, add 1 to your power and divide by the new power, which is 2. Okay, and then remember we can think about this as 5x to the 0, so it becomes 5x to the power of 1, add 1 to the power and divide by that new power, or you know, just Generally, when we anti-differentiate constants, we get um, we, when we anti-differentiate a constant, we just get um, x times that constant, um, and then plus c. All right, so let's just tidy this up. So this is x squared plus five x plus c. Okay, but now we've got some additional information that we can make use of to be able to find c. So we know um, when x is equal to one, y is equal to ten. So we know that ten is going to be equal to 1 squared plus 5 times 1 plus c, and this is going to allow us to work out what c is. So 10 is going to be equal to 1 plus 5, so it's 6 plus c, and so therefore c is equal to 4. And so therefore, find y in terms of x. Let's be clear about what the question's asking us. So let's make sure we answer the question, y is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 4. Okay, so this line here hasn't answered the question. This is y in terms of x and c. All right, so we want y just in terms of x, and we've got enough information to work out c so that we just have an expression for y that is in terms of x. Okay, let's have a look at example two. Find f of x if f dash x is equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 and f of 3 is equal to 5. So this is essentially the same question, it's just in function notation as opposed to um, Leibniz notation in the previous example. Again, it's the same idea that if we want to find, I'm sorry, if we want to find f of x, we're going to need to do the antiderivative of the derivative. That will take us back to f of x. So in this case, that's the antiderivative of 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 with respect to x. Let's antidifferentiate. So that becomes 2x cubed on 3 minus 4x squared on 2 plus 1x, so x and plus c. All right, so um, you can leave that written like that or you can choose to write it as 2 thirds x cubed if you prefer. 4 on 2 is 2, so that's 2x squared plus x and plus c. Okay, so then we know that f of 3 is equal to 5, so we want to substitute that information in. So f of 3 means letting x equal 3. So 2 thirds times 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 squared plus 3 and plus c, and we know that that is equal to 5. Okay, so let's tidy this up. So um, 3 cubed is 27, one third of 27 is 9, and so therefore two thirds of 27 is 18. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18, plus 3 plus c equals 5, so those 18s are cancelling out. 3 plus c is 5, and so therefore c is 2. And so therefore f of x is equal to 2 thirds x cubed minus 2x squared plus x and plus 2. All right, example three. A curve is such that its gradient is mx plus two, where m is a constant. Given that the gradient of the curve at the point two, four is three, 
find the value of m and then the equation of the curve. Okay, so a curve is such that this is its gradient, therefore that's its derivative. Okay, so we know that the derivative of this curve is a linear function, mx plus 2. So therefore this curve must be a quadratic function. The first part asks us to find the value of m. So we've got two bits of information here. We know that the gradient of the curve at the point 2, 4 is 3. So the two bits of information that we've got there are when x equals 2, y equals 4, but also when x equals 2, dy dx, the gradient is 3. Okay. So we're going to use that second bit of information here in order to find the value of m. So the gradient is 3 when x is 2. Okay. And so that is 3 equals 2m plus 2. So 1 equals 2m and therefore m equals 1 half. Okay, so that means that the derivative is 1 half x plus 2. Or we could write that as x on 2 plus 2. However you prefer to think about that, same thing. Okay, so then we want to find the equation of the curve, so we want to find y. Okay, so we know that y is the antiderivative of the derivative. So that is the antiderivative of half x plus 2 with respect to x. Don't forget your dx's. Okay, so antiderivative of x, that's x to the 1. I'm just going to write the half there for a minute. Antiderivative of x is x squared on 2 and then antiderivative of 2 will become 2x. So we've got half times x squared on 2, so it becomes x squared on 4. And you'll get better at working with those fractions. So I made a deliberate choice here to write that half separately. But if you thought about that as x on 2, you want to think about, I'm going to add 1 to that power, that becomes x squared, and dividing by the power means that I'm doubling the denominator. Okay, so you should better get to a point where you can do that straight away. Um, okay, so it's x squared on 4 plus 2x plus c. And this is where we then need to use that other bit of information. So we know, oops, sorry, when x is 2, y is 4. So let's put that in here. y is 4 when x is 2. So 4 equals now 2 squared on 4. That's 4 on 4, so that's 1 plus 4 plus c. So 4 equals 5 plus c. And so c is going to be negative 1. And so therefore the equation of the curve is y equals x squared on 4 plus 2x and then c is negative 1, so minus 1. Okay, so still anti-differentiating but then just taking things that step further by being able to substitute a point or some information about the function into the curve in order to find the unknown c or con um, constant of integration. Okay, so again, some work um, today here, first of all from exercise 17e, just questions 2, 3 and 4, and then there's an additional worksheet um, involving various problems involving finding the constant of integration, and you should do all the questions on the worksheet.